Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. I've been away for a while but I'm back and I hope this time I'm saying I am back. I am going to be staying here with you for quite some time and uh, if God wishes for a longer period to help you uh, with your relocation journey. So today I want us to talk about something that is very important in the relocation journey especially if you're looking to uh, move to Canada through the agricultural stream. Today I want us to talk about there are several ways that you can move to Canada through the agricultural stream. One is the agricultural stream that takes uh, high and low wages uh, workers. There is also the seasonal uh, seasonal agricultural workers however those are for specific countries most likely the caribbean countries the, the mexico uh, those countries from the caribbean side basically and i'm sure majority of you my audiences are in india philippines uh, nigeria ghana or generally the african and the asian uh, continents so i'm sure you do not need so much of the seasonal agricultural program anyway so the one that i wanted to talk about today is about the temporary foreign workers through the low wage stream and specifically the general farm workers how what you need to know about it and how you can be able to uh, change the way or maybe tweak a little bit of how you have been sending your job applications so that you can increase the chances of you getting the jobs number one that you should know is that this program is only for three years it started in 2020 we are in 2023 it's supposed to end in 2024 march in 2024 march however the good thing about uh, canada is that they do extend a period if they find that they can be able to give employers the workers that they need so if they find that this stream was very helpful to these employers the uh, farming companies have been able to acquire more workers with this stream than they did without the stream then the possibility of this stream extending beyond 2024 is very high now before we get to 2024 and then the program closes before you send your applications there are a few things that you should know so that you can be able to send applications and get hired within this period uh, the other thing that you should note is that the government of canada is doing a lot of things it is making a lot of efforts so that it can be able to increase the chances of the people that are getting to immigrate into canada and become permanent residents one of the things especially for the visitors is to remove those uh, restrictions or the requirements for visitors there is a such proposal for them to do that so that the people coming to Canada can be able to come with less difficulties so the advantage of that is for you as a person seeking the agricultural stream is that even the agricultural stream is going to be affected positively so you're going to get that you can be able to move to canada without having to do a lot of requirements or the immigration is going to be a little bit less strict than it has been throughout the periods like since they started these uh, streams so the other thing that you should know about this program is that you can be able to get a PR. What does a PR mean? Well, you might be asking what is PR if you're new to migrating to Canada. So a PR is uh, getting your permanent residence. So getting a permanent residence means that you become a Canadian resident. So you can use this, the agricultural stream through the general farm worker jobs to get to to become a permanent resident in Canada. For you to do that, you have to work for this employer that is going to hire you. And by the way, don't worry, I'm going to give you a, an employer that is currently looking for a job, which you can be able to apply as a general farm worker and get your way to your permanent residence or your Canadian citizenship journey. So. For you to get this citizenship, you have to first work for this employer that is going to hire you or that is going to apply for the LMIA document for you for two good years. So when you're done with your two good years, then you can be able to apply for an open work permit and then you can be able to apply for the 
Canada permanent resident. But remember, for the first two years, you have to work for this employer because he's going to get the LMIA for you and you're going to get a, spe a work specific work permit. Okay, employer specific work permit. So you have to remember that. The government of Canada gives jobs mostly to Canadian residents or permanent residents, those PRs. So what it does, it has a cut. Like for every job that a company or an employer is willing to give out, there are certain jobs that you must give to Canadian residents. So for jobs in the hospitality industry, for jobs in the nursing industry or the healthcare industry, for jobs in the food and manufacturing uh, companies, and even for construction uh, companies, the government says that if you're giving 100 jobs, 70 of them are for Canadian residents, and then the 30 are the ones that you can give to people outside Canada. But there is an interesting fact about this. When they are giving jobs to this, uh, when it comes to the agricultural industry, most Canadian residents and permanent residents don't like working for these jobs. Why? They consider them the very low wage and they consider them like they don't suit their class, if I could talk uh, or if I could say that. So what you find is that the companies or the agricultural farms, they don't get employees to hire mostly and they have to go outside Canada for them to get these workers. So that's one advantage. The second advantage, because of them not finding workers in Canada, the government has removed that cut. Like it doesn't have uh, a cut for the number of people a company can hire from outside Canada. What does this mean for you? If a company is looking for 100 employees, it can hire all of those 100 employees from outside Canada and that increases the chances of you getting the job. So the people that you're going to be competing with in this case are going to be the people from outside Canada. You guys, is, it, is, is there something better than that? I mean, you're competing with somebody who is in India you are in India, you're competing with somebody who is India. If you are in Kenya, you are competing with somebody who is in Kenya. You are in Qatar, you're competing with somebody who is in Qatar, like somebody who is not inside Canada. So your chances of getting the job and his chances of getting the job are at par. They are equal. So the thing that you should be doing is making sure that the resume that you're going to send into your application is going to be better than that other person. The kind of cover letter that you're going to attach to this uh, resume, it's going to be better than that other person. And I have given you a ton of ways that you can be able to use for you to ensure that your resume, your cover letters are going to suit the job descriptions because that is one requirement that is going to get you a job in Canada, okay? So apart from the general farm workers that do not have a cut, other agricultural industry positions that you can target are farm managers, uh, supervisors, uh, nursery and greenhouse operators, and the harvesting laborers. So if you're targeting these kind of jobs, and even fruit pickers, if you're targeting these jobs, remember you're competing with people across the globe, the globe. <laughs> across the globe so your chances of getting hired are as that person who is also not in canada okay so make sure that you send good applications to ensure that you can get these jobs if you want to know how to get these applications well done go ahead and uh, revisit my previous videos about canada resume writing format and even the cover letter writing format and then you're going to get your way ahead of other people the other thing that you know, uh, an interest, another interesting fact that I have found out is that employers are required to advertise these jobs on job bank for three months. Okay, so if you see a job like it was posted this month, it's supposed to be there for the next three months. However, there is a cut to this as well. The government of Canada requires the employers to hire those people that match the job description and how will they know that this person matches the job description even before you send your resume and your cover letter it is because of the profile that you have on your job bank uh, profile so my guys my people do you have a 
profile on job bank website or you just go there and look at jobs and leave and then you go and send your applications and then you keep telling mary i am not getting hired my applications are not getting considered my friend do you have an application do you have a a profile on job bank uh, website if you don't kindly go ahead and create one and make sure that it is for one job i mean you shouldn't be having the same profile you are looking for a, a truck driving job and then you have a general farm worker i mean uh, profile that is going to lower your chances of getting hired because number one the job description for a truck driver and the job description for a farm worker they are two different things and that is why you find that Canadian government encourages employers to hire people with experience. If you do not have experience, please go ahead and get one. Although these farm jobs don't require you to have experience, but imagine you are competing with somebody who has experience. Let's say I have experience in uh, like uh, doing blueberry farming or raspberry farming or strawberries. And I have been working on this job for the past even one year and i have gained experience on how to handle the strawberries what diseases affect the strawberries i can be able to do this so perfectly but you are there you don't have any experience all you know is how to drive or all you know is how to uh, run machines computers work in the office which is good but if I send my application and I show this employer that I know how to handle the strawberries, even if they had said that they don't want somebody with experience, my friend, do you think they are going to choose you? Mm -mm. Let's talk the truth here. Do you think they are going to choose you? I don't think so because even if I was hiring, I would go for somebody who is having a little bit of experience because I know as an employer, I will spend less time training them i will spend less time uh showing them what to do what not to do and they will give me the exact thing that i want so guys experience is an asset even if these jobs are saying that you should not have experience they are going to train you experience is an asset number two they say that the job should be matching with this profile like if an employer is supposed to get people from job bank website then your profile should have matched with the job description in the first 30 days in the first 30 days so you're coming here it's been uh, 60 days over because they're supposed to keep it for 90 days and then you're sending your application yes it matches the profile but remember it's 60 days later 60 days later and the employer has already taken the data for the first 30 days and they say even if it matches the profile for two stars with two stars you can be able to get that person and hire them other than taking a person with five stars but who applied for the job 60 days later so my guys what does this tell you if you're going to be getting jobs from job bank website consider making application to jobs that are one to 30 days old so that you can be able to increase the chances of you getting hired and please create that website create that profile in that website so that you get your chances higher the other thing that i wanted to talk about is that mm -hmm. competition Yes, I know. You think that it's, it's only businesses that get competition. Mm -mm. Even you as a job seeker, you have a lot of competition. Because remember, mostly the jobs in the agricultural industry, especially for general farm jobs, they are said uh, the government or even the employers, they don't usually require you to have experience. So what happens? I am a tech giant or i am a tech guru but i want to get to canada what will i do uh, when i apply for jobs in the tech industry i am not getting them so i think hmm, general farm workers don't need any experience so what am i going to do i'm going to apply for a general farm worker job get the 
uh, visa, travel to Canada, migrate with my family or whomever I want to carry with. And then when I'm in Canada, I'm going to look for a job in the tech industry. So what does this do to you as a general farm worker who is genuinely looking for a job in the general farm working industry? It increases the competition. So the number of people that you're going to be competing with are going to be a lot higher than the number of people other industries are competing with just because there is no experience, there is no education, there is no um, training. All you need to do is to migrate. So guys, when I'm talking about this, I say that you should be able to curate your profile or curate your resume to suit the job description to increase the chances of you getting hired and also having experience will be an asset for you. All right. So I guess I have shared very few but very important things that you should know for you to migrate to Canada as a general farm worker and I hope that you're going to use this information to your benefit so i will be posting several jobs in the subsequent videos on how on uh, available jobs in the canada job bank website but make sure that you have a profile and it matches the job description okay yes so until next time guys i hope that you loved uh, the information i've provided here and it is going to help you in your relocation journey and uh yes that's about it so see you in the next video make sure you subscribe like and comment and uh tell me what else you would like for me to share with you and remember i am not a regulated canadian or uh, immigrant consult consultant i'm just here to share uh, my research the things that I have done research about I'm just here to help you with your journey so if you're looking and you want a lawyer to give you information kindly go ahead and get a lawyer because this is not legal information this is just for sharing and for the benefit of you know giving you information that is going to help you and your relocation journey to be a lot easier than it would it would have been without the information okay so until next time bye bye